Hey guys, today I want to show you how I turned my AOS 3.5 FPV drone into a real powerhouse. So, let's dive right in and check out what's inside this mysterious package. These are the Emacs RS1606 motors with 3300 kV and a nut mount. I got these motors for just 23 euros, which is about $25. That's a steal for the power these things pack. But why not go with the usual T mount with screws, you ask? Well, I wanted to try something new, and honestly, I got tired of always having to loosen two screws. Let's see if I'll regret going with the nut mount or if it's a solid choice. But why even install new motors on the AOS 35? That's a good question. Currently, I've got the Zing 1504 motors with 3100 kV on it. They're solid, no doubt. But when doing power loops, you can really feel that these motors take a while to build up the punch. And as every FPV pilot knows, you can never have too much punch. So, I've been on the hunt for motors with that extra power. I finally decided on the Emacs motors, mainly because of the price. The price to performance ratio was unbeatable. But that's not all. I also ordered these cool race light wire RGB LEDs. They get soldered between the motor and the ESC. Why? Because they look freaking awesome. Plus, I just wanted to try them out and see if they take my drone's visuals to the next level. Of course, there are pros and cons. The upside is that the motors are easier to swap out because the solder joints are more accessible. The downside? More weak points that might fail over time. I'm curious to see how it holds up. I also grabbed a bunch of props with different pitches. It's always good to experiment a bit to find the perfect combo for your flying style. These yellow props, for example, can be used on both T-mount and nut-mount motors. Pretty handy, right? That way, if I ever switch back to the shings, I'll still be good to go. Right now, my AOS 35 weighs about 190 grams. Let's see how much heavier it gets after the upgrade. A shing motor with the original cables weighs about 12 grams, while an Emacs motor with shortened cables weighs in at 18 grams. That's a small difference that might affect flight performance. The race wires themselves don't weigh much. My scale only picks up 2 grams after adding 4 of them, so that's basically nothing. Alright, let's get to work. First, I'm going to remove the old Shing motors. I won't need the old cable channels anymore because the race wires will sit there later. I carefully separated them from the frame with a scalpel to keep everything neat. Precision is key here, folks. Since I didn't feel like resoldering the ESC cables, I decided to cut the Shing motor cables at the right spot. But man, that was trickier than I thought. I had to figure out exactly how much cable length I'd need from the ESC to the race wires and how much to cut from the Emacs motors. Plus, the cable channels were kind of in the way during all of this. And then I noticed that the Shing motors have 26 AWG cables, while the Emacs motors have 24 AWG, which are a bit thicker. Drop a comment and let me know if you think that'll be an issue. I went ahead and cut them anyway, and everything seemed fine. Before soldering, here's a quick tip. I prepped all the race wires with flux and solder, along with the cables on the ESC and the motors. The motor cables ended up being really short, but it should be fine. What do you guys think? Now let's talk LEDs. You can adjust the color of the RGB LEDs using these three small solder pads. I went with pink and purple because white is too boring and red is too dark. The first test is, of course, with a smoke stopper. Safety first. By the way, if it lights up blue and red during boot up, don't worry. That's just because not all motor phases are activated during the ESC startup. Once the motors are spinning, the full color comes through. Quick tip, make sure your race wires are properly insulated from the frame or you'll risk a short circuit. Double-sided tape works great for this. I used some that's 1.5mm thick, so the race wires are nicely isolated. And 
now it's time to put everything back together. My AOS 35 now weighs 215 grams, so 25 grams more than before. With an 850 battery, we're looking at a total of 315 grams. That's a decent weight, but hopefully not too heavy for the quad. The final look? I'm loving it. Now for the moment of truth. How do the new motors and props feel in the air? Stick around to find out. Oh, and before I forget, if you're ever swapping motors like this, make sure to adjust the number of poles in Betaflight. This is super important for the motor control. The Shing motors have 12 stator slots and 14 magnets, while the Emacs motors only have 9 slots and 12 magnets. Now, onto the flight performance. I've gotta say, it feels like a completely new quad. The punch is insane and it's so much more agile, even with a pretty rough PID tune. For me, this upgrade was totally worth it. Every second of the build paid off. As for the race wires, they didn't cause any issues at all. But to be fair, I don't have a direct before and after comparison. Maybe I should have tested the old Shing motors one last time, but I'm too in love with this new setup. And let's be real, the race wire LEDs just look awesome. So what should I upgrade next? Maybe ditch the old Caddy X Vista and go for a DJI 03? What do you think? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Oh, and make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss my Betaflight PID values. By the way, the pitch of the yellow props was much too low for the motors. So, I only fly with the green and violet Hurricane 3630 now. These are my current PID settings. The quad flies great, but during turns, it feels like I'm fighting some outside force. I'll definitely need to keep tuning the PI balance to smooth that out. Here are the rates I'm flying with, along with the filter settings I'm using. Drop a comment below and let me know what upgrades you'd like to see next.